I had uh, somebody ask me this morning, preacher, I, I, well, not, they said, made the comment, I don't know where you're going with this scripture. I hope it fits your sermon title. So, believe me, we'll get there, okay? <laughs> Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to hear your word this morning. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. You wake up in the morning, and the morning news reports a tsunami that kills thousands of people. You wake up in the morning and you read in the paper where there is a tremendous earthquake in Haiti, one of the poorest countries in the world, has just almost no infrastructure whatsoever. And it kills hundreds of people and hundreds of people are left homeless without food. You wake up in the morning and there is a report that there had been an earthquake in Nepal. Hundreds of people had died. Hundreds of people. And you kind of have to ask yourself in that kind of situation, where is God? If God is so powerful and loving and just, where is God? If God is loving and just, then God must not be all-powerful, we think. He's not in control of the situation. Or if God is all-powerful, he must not be loving and just. Well, that struggle between those two things has been around for a long time. And theologians have a name for it. It's called the, uh, theodicy. Psalms 23 says, My flesh and heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. There are bad things that happen to good people. And when it happens, sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes we just, we just don't understand where, where, what is God's purpose in, with this situation. What, what is God doing in this situation? We, we often ask, why me? Why am I going through this, Lord? Why did it happen to me? There was the, a, a, a man that uh, went off on a risk, risky vin, business venture after his friends and uh, consultants had told him, don't, don't do this. This is, this is too risky. And he went on and, and did it anyway, and his business failed after a few years. And he wondered why God had done that to him. See, the situation is that we have freedom. There are three things that we need to remember in a situation like that. First of all, here's where it connects with the Scripture. First of all, God gave us dominion over all the earth. God said, you're going to be in charge with what, with what goes on. We were given free will. We were given free will. And Adam and Eve exercised that will when they ate of the tree that they were told not to eat of. God gave them the freedom to do that. God gave them the ability to make choices. And they made them. They made the choice. And because they made the choice, sin entered into the world. Sin came into the world and destroyed the creation in a lot of ways. The cause of sin. Bad things happen. Creation groans, waiting to be completed 
when all of us have been returned to our heavenly home, then creation will be perfect again, like it was in the beginning. We were made in the image of God with free will, able and have the ability to make choices. But you know, sometimes our choices have repercussions, consequences. Sometimes they have things that happen that, that even after you pray that God would forgive you, the consequences remain. You see, I want to do what I want to do. And I want all of you to do what I want you to do. And if you would do that, you would make my life so much simpler. It may not, may not make your life simple, but it would make mine simpler. And see, that's what we do with God. We, 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 you know, I want my way. I, I want my way. I want to do what I want to do. And that's not always God's will. And when I do not obey God's will, when I do not follow God's will, then there are consequences and repercussions that happen. God can take away the sin, but the consequences and the repercussions remain. So we ask, why me? Why me, Lord? Why did this happen to me? You know, Chris Christopherson wrote that song, Why Me, Lord? What Have I Ever Done? You know, you know that song? Chris was my, is my favorite songwriter. My wife hates him. <laughs> she, uh, and, and Bob Dylan, she hates both of them. Uh, but I love them. Chris was talking about on, on one record, uh, on one of his albums, uh, he was saying that uh, Johnny Cash asked him one, told him one time, he said, you know, Chris, Jesus wrote a, a song called Why Me, Chris? Think about it. It's what we want. You see, we want what we want. And that gets us in trouble. But sometimes things happen that are beyond our control. If you have children, you know what I'm talking about. If you have parents, you know what I'm talking about. Things happen that are beyond our control. Things that, that in the world occur that affect us that we have no, we have no control over. When 9-11 happened and the, and the, the jets crashed into the, into the, the, the Twin Towers, it, it, it affected everyone. It affected all of us. And we had nothing to do with it. But it happened because there was sin in the world and sin causes chaos. And we ask, why me? Why me? Why did this happen to me? And, and there is sometimes no good answer to that. There is no good answer to that question. Why me? God has given us a choice and dominion over the planet. He gives us a choice, the ability to choose good or evil. And we struggle with the freedom that God has so richly blessed us with. We struggle with that freedom. Maybe we need to take a lesson from the great philosopher. Listen to the quote and then you tell me who it was. If you were here at 9 o'clock, you can't play. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can hit, get hit and keep moving forward. It's how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Any, any idea who that was? Sylvester Stallone in Rocky. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep going on. You see, in the midst of the chaos in our lives, in the midst of that chaos that goes on, God is with us. That is a promise that God has made to us, that God would always be with us, would be with us in times, good times and bad times. 
And sometimes we go through things that we have no control over. But God is with us. God is with us. The Laurel Lee song, God, you know, what if your healing comes through tears? I remember when, when I had my knee replaced. That's why I, I was wondering if I could get up. Um, I had my knee replaced, and, and it was in physical therapy. And, uh, boy, they're mean in physical therapy. Let me, 